last time on Dice Funk. Okay, well, I hope there's a weapon in here now, because I... Look, that, that, ball, that rake's gone forever. I could use locate items. I think I have some kind of location spells. It's gone forever. There's no finding something you've lost in the ball pit. I'm yeah. glad you agree, yeah. I love just Tran being completely confused by all this, just, like, not even getting what's what the deal is. Just sort of draws it out without even trying, and then just the the abject horror of the situation settling in. Juniper would like to attempt to place her electric immunity ring on Gale. Hey, Walter, I'm gonna be real with you, man. Do you know that you're being rude? <laughs> what? No, we are competitors. This is how we talk. This is how you say locker room banter. Maybe your, your locker room has been a little toxic. No, Zana assured me this was a normal way to talk. Oh, mm, oh, oh Zana... Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've, I've heard about Zana. <laughs> this guy right here on the head. <laughs> so is this we absorb them into us, do a training montage as us, and then let them back out and they'll be swole? <laughs> but Buddy laughs and says, no, it's just like uh, you can put them in your soul because you're you're bound together. I, it probably yeah. works the other way. I ha We haven't really tried it, but uh, if... If someone's animal can't fly, we'll have to put it away to save weight, and then have everybody get on the animals that can fly. Oh shit! So it's like it's like a waterbed biome kind of thing. Like the entire yeah. thing is basically like uh, like the, yeah, the the. But basically, at its most root form, it can be just a mass of plants floating on top of a big mass of nutrient dense water. Air plants, oh sweet! I just want to see like a like a tulip just fly past. The respawn point. I like the idea of a respawn point. I will point out that literally in the episode where Peter died, uh, that episode ended with Mari saying, oh, can't we just Dragon Ball Peter back at the end of the world? And I was like, well, you can't do that. It's not a wish. It's an environment. And then I, you know, we got off the call and I was like, fuck, you could just make an environment where Dragon Balls grow. I'm Oh! Armed. Respawn point. Could... Could Juniper try and insight on what the magic was that was in the uh, in in that rod to try and replicate whatever that did? Oh, interesting. Uh, sure. Why don't Why don't you roll insight for me? That's that's a botch on insight. I do not know how we did evolved. Upon hearing the name Sprinkles being uttered, Tran just sort of like perks up in attention stares directly kind of at Juniper with the mentioning of Sprinkles' name and then just simply says Sprinkles, you mean you mean the homunculus that that killed my friends? That Sprinkles? Can you describe for me, uh, Gladly Gladys' powerful potions and such? What does that look like? Like the, uh, like describe like the, um, old, like, potion shop she used to run? Absolutely. I always imagine it being like, like a small one-story building, like, kind of like a classic D&D &D tavern style looking thing, but, you know, it's like a shop, like a... Like, like, first town, go in, then buy the potions shop. I think there'd be, like, a lot of little paintings on the wall. Like, probably paintings that Gladys has done, because she's an artist on the side. While she does potions is, like, her main thing. Like, not the- n definitely not the fanciest place you could go to, but, like, it's- it's a good, like- Like, like, you- if- if you're a regular there, it's a pretty reliable place to go get your potions from. So in the main building, like if you go in to buy potions, it's more of a tavern atmosphere. There isn't like a big bubbling cauldron in the middle. Are you doing that stuff in the back or are you doing this stuff somewhere else? Where are you doing uh, mixing and, uh, you know, uh, scary, dangerous stuff that potions <laughs> presumably take to make? Yeah, like a lawsuit sort of situation where any kid could just walk <laughs> in and dip his hand right into it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's... 
as I think of it more, like there's like the paintings in, in like the front part where like there's the counter and you talk to, to Gladys and buy things. And then I think there's like a wall behind her and then you go into the back and that's where like the potion making stuff is. But like at the front, there are like these little ingredients hanging there to like show like this is what I put in the potions. I'm trying to think of wh- um, I'm I'm thinking about the uh, the Atelier series, like the what that 24 entry game series about being an alchemist. I'm like, okay, I've never played any of them, but which <laughs> entry of these would be the most apt for Gladys's shop? Oh, man, I haven't played those either. <laughs> I haven't played them either. I assume no one loses an eye in them. The aesthetic doesn't feel right, but I could be surprised. <laughs> well, you know, listen, okay, we could, we could, we, we should propose a new entry, in which eye removal is uh, a hidden path one can enter. I mean, uh, a, cl- a classic potion ingredient is the Eye of Newt. So oh there are god. things that are losing <laughs> eyes. Oh my god. I mean, that's the opening image, right? That's what we were looking for, is that the, the audience has been held in suspense. We see an eyeball floating in water, and then the camera zooms out, and it's in a cauldron. And then we see Gladys Antimony like stirring the big pot with both of her eyes, and then we realize she's in her potion shop in the past. Yeah, I'm, uh, like, as I think about it more, I, like, she's definitely, like, the, like, the back area with her potion cauldron, and then when she used to have a business partner, probably she would be up at the front, like, doing, like, the business transaction stuff, and and so when she lost her business partner, like, th- she she would have to be in the back and also front-facing, and that's probably part of why... It, it eventually failed. Yes, your business partner, I think you've alluded to obliquely before. Yeah. Uh, but at, at this point, we see Gladys stirring uh, the big pot with the eye of Newt in there. And the door opens and your partner, who is a Yuan T or snake person, as we discussed before, like laser. Um, do you want to do you want to describe her a little bit as she enters the room? I'm thinking about, um, I think it was a picture posted in the Dice Funk server of like, well, like, what does your Yuan T, like, what does your snake person look like? And there was one that I've never seen before. It was like <laughs> snake body as like the head yeah. of, of like a humanoid person below that. The snake is both the face and the hair, which is like an, an interesting idea. It's basically the uh, the Zora from uh, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, so I, I I think I'm vibing with that. I think that um, Gladys's business partner, her name is Amelia, probably looks like a snake person who's like the snake face, and then like the back of the tail is kind of like a like hair adjacent vibe almost like long hair and then she like has like a more human eyed body from the neck down where she's maybe dressed a little sharply like not like a full business suit but maybe like just something more business casual than Gladys's like like belt buckle of potions and her scarf and stuff sure you have a very utilitarian vibe like you have a lot of things you need to access uh, but you've always said that, you know, you were bad at the business part and she was good at it. So I'm definitely thinking of more of like a little accountant vibe. This is like a little business nerd. Yeah. <laughs> Bet she wears a vest, fucking loser. <laughs> Get her ass. I like vests. I, she has a pocket watch and it, and, it, and it doesn't even work. It just looks right. I think pocket watch is more Monopoly man vibes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just like, you the discussion, so you're, and, you, and it's just like, yeah, you're just making sure that no one's wasting your time, even though the clock never moves. I am very cursed with the idea of a uh, sexy Monopoly man snake. Uh, <laughs> so thanks for that. I didn't. You were. Well, well, you never knew that you wanted that in your life, but now you have it for the rest of your life. So you're you're welcome. So I'm imagining sexy Monopoly man snake sort of just as the same body type of the, as the Monopoly man, but with scales. And instead of like business pants, uh, he just has a thong. 
Oh, okay. No. Nope. <laughs> Reverse, <track>. delete. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be like the Watergate tapes. So There's just going to be a big blank for some reason. Well, you got to <laughs> put, put it in because it's the only fan art I ever needed. <laughs> <laughs> I never got Femboy Night Shift. I got to get this. <laughs> Uh, so Amelia opens the door to the potion making area of the shop and she is carrying one of the potions you packaged and she says, glad the, you know, the profit margin on the Bezoar is very tight. You need to be less generous. And she, uh, picks up a, another glass vial, uh, and starts taking a potion you've already prepared and splitting it between its current flask and another one. Just I'm just I'm just using the the, the 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 ingredients to to the best like like ratios that they should be, and also I don't think you should be doing that. If the ratios don't keep the door open, there are no more potions. Uh, um, uh, uh, Amelia, I, I I just I know I like I just I, I can't skimp on something like this. If you make a potion. Even slightly wrong, it could be very bad. It's not skimping, sweetie. It's just good business. Also, water is good for you. It's healthy. I can't, it's fine. And she begins uh, filling the, both the flasks with water to hide the difference of the of the mixtures. God, it just takes a very sharp inhale, like. <sighs> Water is an ingredient. It changes what the potion does. Yeah, now it makes us more money. You know, I know I, know I trust you a lot with these business decisions. You you do so much. I'm I, I, I'm thankful for, but I just I, I I don't like this. I don't like this direction. The direction that you get to do what you've always wanted to do instead of. Uh, wandering through the woods, making little concoctions to test on squirrels. I like this lady. Gorbo gutter slump approved. Where's the child <laughs> workers? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to think the nose should have like, you're right, water is an ingredient, and then just makes potions that are just water, and then claims there are other things. Is it bad that I heard him say, water is, an, uh, water is good for you? And my first thought was, that's what somebody with a piss fetish would say. No. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, it's very bad. What's bad? See, I was, go- I was going for it. We're talking about water and ingredients, and there's just uh, frames spliced in of like uh, a, an ocean and there's a like, big sh- fish shaped like shadow in the distance and it's just like it, it briefly flickering through this conversation every time someone mentions water and you're like ha ha pee pee yeah. <laughs> well you know the the ocean is mostly pissed the fish are peeing in it that's, that's a fact i hate to remember thank you <laughs> fact is a little strong <laughs> It's it's an assertion for sure. Mm-hmm. Look, but. you don't you don't know who who made that ocean. It was handmade by a god. That god could be into something a little bit uncomfortable. Ah, uh, you've solved my puzzle. <laughs> the entire s- season has been leading to this piss world. Season ten. I'm unveiling it now. <laughs> no. <sighs> Dare you enter my magical realm? Oh boy, please, Gladys. <laughs> yeah. I, Save us Gla- from this. Gladys is like, well, like, 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 for, first of all, I was not testing on squirrels. I, I, I was just testing on, like, you know, so, so, some plants. The squirrel was one time, it was an accident. And, and secondly, those were like remedial, basic, like, healing spells. Those could, like, so, something like a, like a, like a spell that's meant to inflict like a deathly necrotic ailment if you water it down or or a spell that's supposed to protect you f- f- from like a-, a poison and you water that down like th- th- that could both those all these op- all those options could lead to uh like 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 a, a potion not being effective enough and 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 then people get hurt and 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 I don't want people to get hurt using the things that I make because I like making these things. If the potion isn't effective enough, then they have to come back and buy more. That's a win-win. 
Damn, she's smart. <laughs> In fact, do you, what if we made a potion that made them buy other potions? You're a genius, Gladdy. No. Gaslight, girl boss, <laughs> gatekeep, <laughs> mentally dominate your customers. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, what what if you? I was like, yeah. What if we made potions that intentionally made our clients unwell, so they needed mm-hmm. to buy potions? Oh, what if you just sell heroin, <laughs> but not heroin <laughs> two, the sequel to heroin? No, just regular heroin. Gladys could make that. <laughs> Look, I'm saying, f- fuck Dragon Quest, fuck, fuck Arabella, it's now Breaking Gladys. <laughs> yes, please. It's, it's just like, don't, 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 me, that's a terrible idea. As you say that, you're like gripping the big spoon while you're stirring, and you you look down, and the mixture is blood red, which it absolutely should not be. Just, just glad Gladys is just like if 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 you make a potion to make people buy the potions, what is, what's even the point of 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 selling the potions in the first place? Like that that's circular. I don't. That's... It's all circular. We give them the potion, they give us the money, we turn the money into potion, we give them the potion, they give us the money, around and around and around. Potions and money, potions and money, potions and money. And just the circular, the imagery, just the eye is like rolling now, like slowly orbiting in the potion in the big cauldron, just unnaturally like there's some kind of current roiling against the eyeball. I, d- I, d- I don't like going in circles and I don't like these because c- th- it feels like recently that's what we've been doing just going in circles talking about like oh like I, I like you have these ideas to increase the profits and that's good in theory but they're bad they're bad ideas I, 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 I don't I don't like them what else is there, Aunt? We're just gonna. You want to give potions to everybody? There's not enough potions for everybody. If I didn't have to run a business to do this, I wouldn't. I just want to be able to do this to help people. And the water is like sloshing now in the pot, like unnaturally loudly and like echoing. Uh, and you look up from the blood red potion. And you see your partner, Amelia, whose body normally is a snake. Uh, It is still like slimy and scaly, but in a much different way. Uh, It is now gray and fish-like. And she, instead of having a snake for a head, has a fish for a head. A fish with long grasping tentacles and three red eyes, one on top of the other, like a traffic light. And she is some sort of strange Yuan T. Aboleth. Let me just say what everyone's thinking. It sounds really hot. Okay, continue. Okay, thank you. I don't, I don't know if anyone's ever sexualized an Aboleth before, so we may be breaking new ground. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? It's about time. This is what society's been building to. I, th- I think it, it, if, like, there's all this, like, scary imagery, like the blood and the aboleth head and the gray, like, disconcerting mix of aboleth and Amelia, like, j- j- just, like, clutching her head, just, like, ca- shrinking into herself, just going, like, I don't like you when you're like this, Amelia. This is, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't do this. So when your hands go to your face, uh, you feel on your you know, cheek uh, a warmth and a heat, and then there's a pain, but it's kind of distant, and you can reach up and you know, feel across your face, and there's this blood dribbling down from your eye socket, uh, but there's also a strange uh, 
darkness and like numbness coming over you as well. And you are both here in this room and floating in the ocean. Yeah, when, when you put it like that, my very first thought was like the, the pickaxe just kind of scoops the eyeball out like a, like a fucking ice cream scoop, but that seems unlikely at best. Or it could just be that I got it in her <laughs> I, I, as in Throg, got it into her eye, and then she reflexively jerked back because there's a pickaxe in her eye tearing it out in the process. Yeah, if it's a pickaxe swinging and... Like they're, it's toward her face, then it could be that like she like her jerking back does make a lot of sense because like that's a that's a reflex like you, you don't just and also you're underwater you don't just stay there while you get hit in the face. See if we were still in the life biome, it could have been a, a pangman sort of get down, Mister President, <laughs> Presidenting her, <laughs> trying to take it for himself. Get, get down, Mister President. So Gladys, uh, the last thing you remember is using shocking grasp on Throg to try to bring him out of his mind control. And then there is, you know, pain and warmth in the potion shop and Amelia. And then you feel the brush of sand on your cheek as you wash up on a shore. Like, I, th- I think if rushing up on the shore, just like kind of take a gasp for air, but go to go to put her hand up on her face, like 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 she did earlier. Yeah, I mean your face is fucked up. I don't know how de- how detailed and gruesome you want to get. This could be uh you know a situation where like yeah now I have a fucking badass eye patch. I'm sick as hell and more powerful than ever, and it's like the vibes are good. Or this could be like. I'm severely fucked up, and Gladys is going to spend the rest of this campaign being like, that was messed up, and I'm upset. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think she's like... I won't go into too much more detail about her eye, because I would like to even, like like get it covered up with a little eye patch sooner rather than later, and I think she shares the exact sentiment. But I do think once she like assesses the situation for herself, she's like immediately sitting up to look around because she's like startled and confused about how she got here where's Trayen where's Throg Throg when uh, Gladys used shocking grasp on you to try to break you out we were talking about you thinking of yourself in some you know, distant war, some some memory where you were like fighting and you didn't know it was Gladys and it was, seemed like some other enemy. Uh, what, what was that like? I know uh, off mic you mentioned to me uh, something that I thought I found really intriguing about uh, you know your previous Drake. Yeah. Um, so I've mentioned it before that Throg is a he's an old soldier, so to speak, uh, and. I, I think where he was uh, was probably back at his most traumatic point in his life because it would be the thing that would get him to fight the hardest. Um, Throg did at one point have a family and had a Drake before uh, Gort. And I think he was at the exact moment where he watched them die. It, it's 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 so funny when, when, when the lizard shocks another lizard in self defense because the other guy thinks that he's in the worst moment of his life. And then she gets her eyeball scooped out. <laughs> I like to think that it's still on the edge of the pickaxe. Ooh, gruesome. I, I do. I do think the most probably appropriate enemy for this case, and I think it's something that's been paired out in D anD D a few times. Uh, giants and dragons, uh, at least as you've established with uh, the Heckington Harrys, don't really like each other, and that's probably what did his family and previous Drake in. Yeah, that, I mean that has its roots roots in Norse mythology, but the elves and dwarves and the giants and dragons rivalries are are pretty strong. That's the Chicago Bears and Green Bay Packers, or the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox of D and D. I would say. And I, I would I would think that this honestly might have not even happened during a wartime. I think this would have been 
something he had encountered in his past coming back to bite him harder, essentially after he's already retired. Uh, like uh, like someone coming in to dish out revenge served cold. And of course, that ties in with that conversation you had with Gladys that one night where you're like, hey, don't kill people. It's bad. <laughs> and then you scooped out Gladys's eye like a big scoop of ice cream. Actually, I believe I said sometimes you definitely got to kill people. <laughs> so- you got to ask the question. <laughs> you got to think, are you ready to kill someone? Is there anything you want to say about the particular scene uh, with uh, the the Drake or you know your family, or is it just a uh, a general bad time? Um, I think Throg probably was living sort of not not on like the out in the woods fully at this point, but probably lived in like a secluded area with his uh, with his family, his Drake, etc. And by the time he gets there. Um, the, uh, the house is already in ruins. Uh, there, there is a fight essentially commencing by this point. Um, it's probably down to, uh, just his mate and his, his Drake by this point. They're both badly wounded. And, uh, Throg hurls himself into, to, to combat right as he sees, uh, them die. Uh, and probably the last thing uh, that that scene ends on and it leads directly into what happens to Gladys is Throg uh, leaping onto uh, the giant and piercing it through the skull with his spear uh, before pit- scooping up the last of the uh, his Drake's eggs and just walking into the woods. All right. And so you carrying the eggs in the past becomes you carrying anything particular as you kind of walk up out of the water and onto the beach is it just your equipment is there did you gather something in the ocean i i don't know what would be we'd be gathering in the ocean if in the moment it would probably uh, either gort or gladys would be the most appropriate gladys is already there so it would have to be gort gotta carry your your baby drake You've got a big, you got a big gort, and is he is he just vibing, or is he like wiggling? Is he like not adhering to the solemnity of this flashback because it's just a kind of animal, and you're like under mind control and having this, uh, you know, tragic reverie, and he's just like, blah, 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 I'm, a, I'm a little guy, I'm a little guy. <laughs> I I, th- I think Gort is actively probably stressed out from this because uh, I, Gort was following my commands from the the fight, but he is attacking someone who has been playing around with him and. Uh, someone he's familiar with, he he likely has no idea what's going on. It's just a stressed animal. It's sort of uncomfortable at this point. Okay. So you walk up onto the beach carrying Gort, uh, who is stressed out and so like jumps out of your arms and starts running um, probably towards Gladys on the beach. I bet uh, Gort can like smell her or try to track her. Because yeah, there's a lot of blood. You can definitely smell that. <laughs> sure. There's a sharp tang of blood here on this beach. I should say uh, the beach feels different than the last one you saw. There are no people. There are no, like, tents. There's no signs of, like, wooden boats or campfires. And the sand has a different grain to it. It's just immediately different. The other beach had this really nice sand it was just like not irritating or coarse at all and this stuff has like really big grains and just the stepping on it feels unique to you i will say but if you start following gort down the shoreline and you can see like gladys in the distance and uh you start making your way over to her does does throg remember what happened i think it's going to probably come back in, in fits and starts here. Right now, I think you're just in a daze. Yeah, I was going to say, I think he's still kind of like... Uh, the, the best way I could describe it is if you've ever known someone with dementia that gets kind of lost in a, a memory, I think that's sort of what he's going through right now. Yeah. Uh, we see Throg kind of stumbling down the beach uh, after, after Gort and half in and half out of memory. Uh, Trayan. Mm-hmm. So Trayan, you're floating in the water, uh, still you know surrounded by blood, and you know your your 
disease is wearing off, so uh, you're going to have to start getting to shore soon to breathe air. Uh, but you're floating in front of this huge aboleth uh, who's just towering over you, its three red eyes glowing, uh, and the voice that rings in your head says, Hey, Chief, uh, I, you know, I've, I've been in your brain. I know that y you and your friends, you came up here to see if it's safe for dragons, and it, it's not, man. It's uh, well, I'm here, and I'm, I'm not safe for dragons, and it's not safe for me for you to be up here. But, uh, I mean, who, who, gets, who gets to be up here? You think uh, you can just attack me? Why shouldn't I attack you, man? I mean, I don't know. Why aren't you attacking me right now? I mean... You have the advantage. You could take care of me easily. So, I don't. I don't want dead dragons. That doesn't do anything for me. I, I mean, listen, Chief. I'm trying to. I'm trying to accomplish things. I got goals. You know, I'm trying to get things done. So you're the one running around attacking people. I guess I was just kind of well, going along with things. You know, it seems that everywhere we go up here, we're just getting pulled into different fights, whether we start them or not. Listen, friendo, there's a lot of stuff up here. There's a lot of, there's a, it's a big pile of money. It's just a big old hoard of gold. And, you know, everyone's trying to get a, get, get a handful, you know, and it's, it's normal to, to be swatting each other's hands. It's, you know, and just, it's, it's, it's not unusual, you know, to be loved by anyone. It's, it's not unusual, uh, to make, to make me cry. But, you know, you, you, you came out here. I didn't come to you. So you gotta have responsibility. As far as I can tell, I'd rather just have this place be safe for everyone, but I don't know how much of a possibility that's going to be at this rain. I mean, come on. Why are, you, why are you out here? You know you're attacking. You're not, you're not up here to, to make friends. We're not, you weren't shaking hands. You're not coming out here. It's all, all fun, and, fun and games, like a carnival. Carnival Barker going on a big ride, wearing a big hat. This is, you know, you're trying to get, you're trying to take stuff. It's, you're trying to get, you're trying to hoard me. You're trying to put me in your little hoard, like a little coin. You're going to sit on me like a big, a big, uh, you just see them, um, not a coin. Um, uh, no offense, but you're not my type for, for a hoard. Uh, I mean, I, I was just, we, we were just, uh, we were told that you were a problem and we were looking into it, you know, and I, I mean, we if if we attacked you first, why aren't you, you know, finishing me off then? I have a lot of responsibilities, you know. I go going all the way back, my 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 father's father and his father's father and their father's father and her father's father, all the way back. And there's a lot of stuff you don't. If you're just kind of scuttling around, you're swimming in my stream, and you don't even know all the things, and you're trying to make big decisions, but you don't have all the knowledge, and I have all the knowledge, and I got responsibilities, and I've got. Uh, I got uh, abla, abla, I've got abla, I've got uh, abla espanol, and you don't. What do you have? You just you think you can come up here and just start moving the pieces around, and you don't have everything. I got you know I got I got little guys. I got got little guys on the shore. I got little guys in the mountain. I got little guys in the streams. I got little people everywhere. They're doing my little things. They're looking around. They're trying to solve the things. And now you and your little friends. You're my little guys, all right? And your 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 little slimy friend with the with the big and the sharp. Uh, he's my little slimy guy now. So you can go and you can do you can go looking for me, okay? How about the how about that? You're you're saying you want us to be like, uh, well, that weird old guy that I tried to talk to on the beach. Sure, I'm some people some some of some of the land people they actually want to be my little guy. You know, they come to me and they say, hey, Kushim, can I be your little guy? And I say, sure, man. Look, it, everyone lo loves it. Uh, they get my they get my uh, my slam and my thoughts and my, my knowledge. And it's a real big help. A lot of people out here, they, they take two, two sticks and two stones and they think they have a, a sword, but they don't. And so I can give you that. And so if you want to be my little guy and you want to look around and find my things, you know, just I want you to go out there and I want, there's something I want you to find for me. And if you do. Uh, your little friends, uh, you know, the guy, he can be, uh, go be a little, a little, a little lizard again. He doesn't need to be me anymore. How about that? So are you saying that there's a way I can help them and kind of stop all this? Uh, yeah. You want to help? You want to help your, your friend with the, with the big eye and the friend with the, the big sharp, you know, just, this just, why don't you 
go find one of my other little guys and you just go and you just look around for me. You just got to find something. Just find the thing. It's not even, I don't know why you have to make such a big deal out of it. Just find the thing and you just go back to your little scurrying and scuttling, so your little legs. You, you talk about this other guy. Where is this other guy, man? Can you at least tell me that? When you say that, uh, Throg, you reach uh, Gladys on the shore there. Uh, what is that interaction like? You just like trudge up behind Gort, who is like circling Gladys excitedly. Um, I think the most appropriate scenario, because he's still in and out of like a PTSD days, I think he might, because of her size, mistake Gladys as one of his kids. Oh my god. Christ. <laughs> um, and I, I think you'd probably be able to still tell that uh, Gladys is horribly hurt and not realizing he's the one that did it. Uh, he'd probably be running up panicking and draconic and immediately trying to like triage her wounds. And I'm trying to think of how Gladys would react to this because like for, for, first thing but like the ser the series of emotion she feels is she she's glad to see Gort she she she's glad that Gort's not hurt she sees Throg running up and instinctually she's scared because she doesn't know if Throg is Throg and then she sees that he's freaking out and I don't think she's ever really seen him freak out before it, 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 and so she's just kind of like stun locked she doesn't really know what to do it, like it, except like kind of like tr try to maybe use gort as like a support to try to get up on her feet uh yeah um i i think throg's immediate reaction is going to be um he he's uh gonna essentially start ripping at his clothes to get like a cloth bandage essentially and he's uh, panicking, saying his child's name over and over, going like, "What, what, what happened? What's going on? Uh, uh, where, where's your mother?" Uh, as he's forcibly trying to bandage Gladys at this point. She, she, she's like, she recognizes enough that Throg is trying to help that she's not going to like run, like, like run off from him. But she probably does like flinch back from him a little bit. And, and it's just like I I I I, I don't I, just lots of stuttering later. Just I, I I don't know what happened. I don't I don't I don't I I, I haven't seen my mom in ages. I don't. What, what are you talking about? Uh, I I think Throg's only reaction to that would be a ages. What 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 has happened? What where, where how, your eye? Where, what is going on? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things happened at once. We were, we were in the water, and 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 and, and then we were fighting the, the the big guy, the biggest guy, the, the big, and 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 then and then I then I was then I was fighting you, and and you were fighting me, and 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 then there was a lot of pain, and 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 I don't know where we are now. Uh, I. I think by when you start to explain the story, it's it begins to bring Throg out of this this state, and the the look of concern is still on his face. But as you talk, um, just pure seething fury kind of kind of replaces it after a while. Like um, you've seen him like angry probably isn't the word in a in a fight. Um, that's that's fighting for survival. There's anger in there, but it's mostly just raw emotion of trying to survive. This is like a frothing rage boiling up. Um, he's he's not speaking. He's just clenching. He's clenching the the pickaxe uh, in his other hand so strongly at this point, you could probably almost hear it creaking if it wasn't a magical artifact. And so you two are here on the beach, uh, you know, shakily on your feet. Uh, Throg is like trembling with rage. And you hear a sound uh, behind you, and you can uh, turn away from the ocean uh, to see up the beach. A creature has, like, flapped over and landed on the sand and is kind of, like, slowly walking towards you. Uh, she is pretty small, uh, like the size of a pug or so. Uh, but she has big bat wings. 
um, and is wearing a big top hat and a kind of a cloak. And she walks over to you. Uh, her legs are so short. This is like taking a while. It's not particularly dramatic. But you see this uh, homunculus is the kind of creature this is uh, coming down the beach towards you. I, I think Throg like places himself between Gladys and this creature and just sort of readies himself for whatever comes at this point and shouts out, the, who are you? Uh, identify yourself. Instead of identifying herself, uh, the monkeyless kind of reaches behind her uh, where she has like a capelet on and reaches inside the bag of holding there and pulls out a big cigar and uh, starts uh, lighting that up as she walks down the beach towards you. Uh, and you see behind her uh, the grass of the, uh, the, the, where the beach ends has a very strange uh, texture. You can kind of hear it swaying in the wind and scraping in like a really audible way that's strange to you. And you see the stars and planets and, you know, uh, above you, which are very unnervingly close, also have a kind of uh, strange inky quality to them. And it's a very unsettling tableau as this homunculus comes towards you down the beach. Um, I, I think Throg uh, will uh, once again uh, demand for uh, this creature to identify itself. Uh, he, he He's just still frothing rage at this point. All right. Trayan, in the ocean, the Aboleth reaches out a big tentacle and kind of gives you a, a shove. Uh, and you start, your body starts physically moving away in, in the tides and in the, uh, the streams. You uh, have the underwater breathing uh, effect still, but that's going to run out soon. I think everyone is kind of coming down off that. Uh, but you are still talking to the Aboleth psionically. Uh, and he says, uh, just go just go talk to uh, Sprinkles. Come on, just uh, Sprinkles. Uh, she's she's a little uh, fella. I have her looking around, trying to find things. Uh, you you know, got big, big wings, big hat. Pretty obvious. Just uh, she, not much of a talker, but uh, just she'll help you. I'm trying to like, like <clears throat> uh, trying to sort of like just stares at the Aboleth as he floats away towards the surface, towards the beach, and then lets out a little sigh and then psionically just responds, okay, I'll see what this Sprinkles wants, uh, wants to do and help out how I can, I guess. As you uh, repeat the name Sprinkles back to the Aboleth, all of you are kind of on this party line now. The Aboleth is, uh, has used the ability Enslave on Throg, um, which means that Throg can be controlled, but um, you know, right now Dan has the agency to play the character, but it's really like there's an open uh, group chat right now. And that, that name, Sprinkles, reaches all of you in Trayan's voice. Um, and the homunculus takes like a deep drag on the cigar and just blows a big cloud of smoke looking up at you. Uh, barely even like ankle height to Throg. Um, just, just the tiniest little kind of creature. I think they have like a one eighth, uh, challenge rating or something. Man, it's hard, hard to justify Throg not in character, just wanting to step on this creature right now. Uh, uh he will once he, he knows who this, what this creature's name is right now. He knows it's connected to the Aboleth and he'll just demand what, what do you want? <laughs> I just looked it up. Homunculus actually have a challenge rating of zero. <laughs> so less than less than one eighth even. Uh, Sprinkles looks up at you uh, and you hear the Aboleth's voice. All three of you do uh, say she's she doesn't do much much talking. She's just kind of, uh, you know, I created her out of some mud and some uh, sticks and stuff. And, you know, she kind of does does her own thing. She's uh she's getting some of her own thoughts, you know, <laughs> you know it's it's uh, it's a uh, it's weird to have all these these little thoughts for a little mud, uh, it's a little uh, tiny little flap, but you know uh, it's fine that everyone has little thoughts. You have some, and uh, it's uh, I'm giving you mine, and they're better. So just that's the, all of you, just uh, go looking. You know, there's a there's a thing that the, the that's here, and it's uh the, you know it's kind of th it's the thing. 
All right, so I, I take it Throg probably knows what what the whole gist of the scenario is now. The Aboleth has given them a task and he's still enslaved. Yes. I think uh, specifically, Throg, you you uh, uh, will have advantage on checks to know what, what this fucking person is trying to articulate to you. Okay. Th- through 10,000 generations of overlapping consciousnesses. Mm-hmm. Um, Throg is going to acquiesce to this, of course, for the sake of his companions. Uh, but I think he will, before doing this, uh, turn to the ocean and uh, st- essentially scream, even though he knows that the Ableth is mostly just hearing him through his thoughts right now. Uh, Were my sins not great enough, beast? Now you must bring me down low once again? You must drag my companions into this nightmare? I will complete your task, beast. But know this. Your sins will not be forgotten, as will, nor will mine. I never forget nothing, man. That's the whole thing. I remember it all. Oh, one day, this world will forget you. Mark my words. Come, tiny creature, show us what we must do. Uh, Sprinkles the homunculus kind of uh, flaps up onto the edge of your uh, spear, just like a light's on it. Uh, she is a very... A uh, fragile creature, and you barely notice the weight at all. Um, and she points with the cigar uh, in a direction. You have been completely turned around by that fight in the ocean, and you have no idea where you are uh, at this point. Trey and you are like, you know, coming out of the ocean, seeing them on the shore. Um, I don't know mm-hmm. if we haven't rolled. <laughs> We're more than halfway through the episode. No <laughs> one's rolled anything, uh, but uh, maybe we are now reaching that time. I mean, once Train is out on the shore and can see Gladys, um, he is going to make a beeline to her, just get down on his knees and even just offer up just a big hug, seeing that she's at least conscious and, you know, still with everyone. And all while just you know, muttering, like, apologies to her for what has happened, just like... It, it it's it's not it's not your fault it, it it's 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 not that was no it is mine who what you we 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 went up against something that that just totally floored us it's uh, do do not make excuses you trusted me with your safety and i failed you there is no apology that can make up for that Still, I'm got uh, comedy podcast. Everyone, <laughs> I, 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 j- j- just Throg says says that, and and like, e- even if there's not, I I, I'm still glad you both washed up here. I I I, I wasn't I, I I wasn't sure where I was. I wasn't sure when I was. What was happening? I I I, I don't. The, this was the s- scariest thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. And I'm hoping at the very least, maybe it will stay that way. I could just, we can just keep, we can move up from here. Uh, Tran will stand up after that. Um, look over to the homunculus and then just, just be like, your sprinkles, right? Sprinkles nods. All right. Well, let's get going then. And he sort of like shakes himself off a bit to get some of the water off of his clothes and such. And then just gets ready to go where he's directed to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to say as if... Gladys's eye is stabilized at this point. Throg's just going to start walking. Yeah. Why don't we make some rolls here uh, for where you're going, uh, what you're doing. Uh, we could also get, uh, you know, more descriptions about uh, fixing uh, Gladys's whole situation. I don't know uh, how cool you want to be, but you basically can be as cool as you want. Artificer infusion time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> 
I want to make, make, make like, manufacture an, uh, an, an, uh, uh, replacement eye out of stuff, just fuse with magic, you know. Put a little rock in there. Put a laser in it. <laughs> um, uh, ooh, 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 like, uh, make, a, like, a buster cannon, like a Mega Man buster cannon just goes in the eye and shoots potions. There you go. Well, I, I think that would be more like the, the horny toad, which shoots blood out of its eyes. Like, like... It can't be a glass eye because I don't think I can manage that on a, a, a with like the materials I have. But maybe like, like I just keep imagining like a like a nice smooth stone, and you just kind of stick it in there. May, may, maybe like. Well, we are on a beach, and Throg does breathe fire. Could melt that into glass. <laughs> Tra- Tran and yeah, Tran has cooking supplies and can punch fire. So between us, I think we could actually make glass if we wanted to. We are the fabled glass blowers that the first town desperately needed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's many directions we can go with this. Uh, it's just kind of like, what do, what do you think? Whatever you think would be cool or interesting for Gladys to do uh, f- for her eye, you know? Yeah, I think like, like glass from sand or even just like, melting down one of her little potion bottles and making that into like a marble with like like something cool inside there to like represent whatever artifice or infusion is in there which i was looking through the infusions that i have picked out and like i think there's one that's like enhanced defense but that like applies to armor so so like i wasn't quite sure which infusion or or thing to put to put a spin on this eye, but I want something it, like Gladys would try to go on a defensive bent bec- because of the circumstances, at least. Well, what infusions do you got? Artificial infusions. I have six of them. I have repeating shot, enhanced arcane focus, spell refueling ring, enhanced defense, homunculus servant, and enhanced weapon. One of those is deeply problematic, given the themes. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 what one, one I would propose would be a spell refueling eye. So what it is is your what do you think? Well, your potions convert it to a, a vessel that sits in your eye, and then you infuse it with a spell, which causes it to fill with whatever the spell is, and it gets. That's sort of what that's where my headspace is at. That sounds cool because, like, I've been trying to color code the spells in my mind so like an eye that changes color like that 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 sounds cool and then you had like a different idea the other idea would be to make it just like an arcane focus so that you're casting spells through your eye (laughs) 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 but again i think either one of those would be what i would throw as ideas just go with whatever you feel feels coolest we can roll with it you said you had a what is it enhanced defense? Uh, yeah. I think you can infuse multiple items. Do you want to infuse Throg's armor? Oh yeah, I I, I could do that for sure. Because I think that then brings me up to twenty one AC if you do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is all happening on the beach, right? And you're using your draconic breath weapons to shape glass, and we're using uh, the the potion reagents that Gladys has to infuse things. This is like a huge, big scene, I think, if you're making a bunch of different stuff. I I am trained in herbalism, so I guess I could also be scrounging out and around the, like, the nearby area for ingredients for Gladys. It's the least he can do at this point. Let's see. I, I really like the spell refueling ring idea. I mean, you were saying like a glass marble in your eye socket that fills with different potions. Yeah. Like you can, ma- I can picture it filling up with like green juice or blue juice or red juice, like mana mm-hmm. health and uh, special abilities or something. <laughs> I mean, that is that's objectively sick as fuck, especially. <laughs> it's a really baller idea. <laughs> now, now I have an important question. Uh huh. To use this magical eye juice, do you then take the glass eye out? And squeeze it into your other eye. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it. You you could make it a thing where it's a thing that you pull out and use as a potion, or you could 
flavor it that it's just it shoots out of a unseen hole so it's just like a like it like it shoots blood or shoots acid out of it you know it's you know, whatever flavor you want to go with just have fun with it you know artificers can be wild with their spell casting so just embrace it <laughs> i imagine this in the worst way possible which was that it was a coiled up tube in her eye and then she pulls out like a hose <laughs> no <laughs> i you all are taking this in a completely different direction. I'm thinking of this as like a sick anime power up where you just yeah. have a, a glass eye at all times. That's really cool, and it's di- has it's full of different colored potions at different times. You're not pulling it out and so forth. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking too. Because because like the, the 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 actual mechanical thing of sp- spell refueling ring is you can recover one expended spell slot as an action. So it's not like I have to pull it out or anything. I'm imagining it just like does a cool light show so you said something about gathering herbs uh what what kind of role are we talking about here uh i'd guess probably survival to identify the right uh the right herbs and then pull them in all right let's get the first roll of the episode Woohoo! that'd be a 13 all right throg uh you head up the beach to the uh grassy area uh, and you start uh, rummaging around for herbs uh, that could be useful here. Uh, a thing I'll give you a 13 is that the strange uh, plant life bef- that I mentioned before, the way it was like scraping noisily, uh, you, you reach over and you touch it and it has a almost parchment feel. Uh, I think paper as such is relatively rare in the post-apocalypse just because of how fragile it is. Mm-hmm. But you recognize that like this grass appears to be made of paper uh, and it is therefore when it like rustles, it's much louder than natural grass or, you know, traditional grass. Uh, so I'll give you that. You don't think any of this stuff is going to be medicinally useful. Mm-hmm. No matter, even some of it looks like flowers. Uh, it looks like, you know, berries and stuff. Um, but it's not, <laughs> it appears, does, it does not appear to actually be plant life. I think you find some berries uh, and you like pluck them off the uh, little plant they're on. And then it's like you pop the, the is there anything written on these blades of grass uh no there is not okay uh you said the the sand was also kind of weird correct the sand was very coarse and strange if i pick it up and like get like a good look at it does anything look odd about it <clears throat> so uh seeing that the grass is paper and the berries are ink you go back down to the beach you start picking up handfuls of sand this very coarse sand and uh, like you get like one scoop deep on the surface Mm -hmm. and there is an entirely different color of sand underneath the first layer so the first one was a traditional kind of sandy beach whitish like off white color Mm -hmm. and then there's just like pink sand underneath that and you scrape past that and there's yellow sand and you can kind of make like a core it's, sample. I have, it's pigments. I, have, yes. I have two. Yeah, I have two ideas of what this is. The, I think the different colors now makes me think. Is it, I think this is a god of art type of situation right here. Dan, it's so funny that you're just fucking nailing me from 200 meters with sniper <laughs> shots uh, because the whole rest of this show has been the players not even taking a single hint once any time ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, my my first thought was okay. There's paper and ink. Maybe this is a god of magic or knowledge, and this is like a library biome type situation. But once you get different colored pigments, that's starting to get into like, ah, I, I honestly thought the the, the sand was going to be like graphite tips, essentially. But nah, this mm. makes sense. No, there's a, there's a forest of pencils further on. All right, there um. we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my first thought was like, is this like a book god, like kind of toward the library idea? Uh, listen, we have a history with libraries on this show. It's a whole thing. So, yeah, burn them down, <laughs> every single one. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm just thinking now. Oh, sweet, we could uh, mix. So, what happens? So, if you take the sand and mix it with water, does it just become like paint? I was literally trying to draw on some of that imagery earlier when I was saying in the flashback the water became blood, and then you you wash up on the shore, and there's just like the water and the potion and the blood, and there's just these different colors of liquid. But also you were too disoriented and stunned to, to really, uh, you know, ruminate on that. You know, things were happening. But yeah, if you walk down to the water line, you can see that like the water is. If you know you're from Florida, sketch you know like red tide uh, effects basically. 
Yeah, of course. Uh, every every day, you know, when I'm driving up the 436, you know, there's red tide all <laughs> over the streets. Um, if you, I assume everyone knows, but if you Google red tide, I mean, uh, you will see some dead animals, which is sad. But uh, there is like an algae uh, situation that can turn the water red. Um, which is like what I'm picturing. You can like walk down mm-hmm. uh, the coast here, and there's different parts where the natural uh, accretion, or what's the opposite, ablation of the. Oh man, it's been a while since my mm. la- my land law class of the of the ocean is taking the sand and revealing different colors, which are staining the water. Now you can't fool me. This, this red tide. This is an industrial Kool Aid accident, and they're trying to cover it up. This ain't no algae. Uh huh. So that's the with your your role was only thirteen, but Dan's brain was more like a fifteen. So you have succeeded. Uh, are there any roles associated with your cool glass eye, or is that something you get? Walk us through those mechanics because these things are happening happening simultaneously. So I think I'm envisioning the way that like Gladys would in like make and infuse a magic into like a glass eye is that like first you've got to like melt the like one of her like empty like potion flasks down into like kind of like an eye shape like you would melt that down and then like she would make the she would she would put the ingredients together that she needs to make like a little like like concentrated potion that like goes in to like a, like a orifice like opened for for like the glass and then like melted a little more to seal it up like without like like melting it all away again uh so this is from tasha's cauldron of everything i believe the artificer class uh the i the ability you get is called infuse item at second level you gain the ability to imbue mundane items with cer- certain magical infusions which is what you're doing. When you finish a long rest, you can touch a non-magical object and imbue it with one of your infusions. The infusion remains in the item indefinitely until you die, after which it disappears after a number of days. Yeah, this is just like a, a thing that like she has everything that she has needs to make it like at her disposal. She just needed the time to do it. And Trayan, you're you know taking your heat stance and you know helping shape glass. Is that what's going on? Yes, yes, that is what Trayan's doing. Is aiding with the fire with you know various flaming punches and kicks, you know, as necessary, and uh, tending the fire as necessary so that uh, Gladys can just focus on the glass work. Uh, you notice that uh, sprinkles will flap her wings in such a way as to like help stoke the flame. Uh, she d- doesn't speak, can't speak, but does not appear to be a 100% extension of the Aboleth. She seems to have her own like little attitude. Although for the audience, uh, a thing that you would notice seeing her is that she does not appear to have any of the, the cards that she normally carries with, carries with her. So that is just something I will point out as she is kind of like watching you all do this. Mm, mm, mm. Interesting. Um, I, I think Throg might be arranging about the area a little bit more, trying to get a better feel of it. He wasn't able to find any herbs, and he's not really going to be able to be useful for the actual foraging of the, uh, the stuff. But if he can get a better idea of, like, I, I don't know, is there uh, there art worms here? They're big worms trying to eat your art or something <laughs> that, like that. <laughs> uh, give me a nature check. Okay. Surprisingly, quite bad at nature. <laughs> mm-hmm. I got a six. Yeah, I think probably I just like the idea of artworms now, but that that's very cute. I think you probably do find some, but they don't appear to be useful mechanically. Mm-hmm. It's just like a cute little uh, with a six. It's just you see some worms <laughs> and they appear to be uh, native here. So that's just a fun thing Throg gets to know. <laughs> I think he's trying to figure out how they fit into this environment. Maybe, uh, you know what? I know what it is. They they ingest the pigment in the water, and they're like a tube of paint. Yeah. You just squeeze That's them. That's so cute. <laughs> well, you do got to squeeze a word to get the paint out. So people could have to get used we, we, to that. We, 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 we... Uh, we're just here thinking about animals that help uh, creatures help process the raw materials in these uh, biomes, man. <laughs> well, I'm trying to if they're like custom made biomes 
and the creatures in it are custom made, they probably should be designed in a way that they serve a function for that biome. Like the penguin makes sense. They want to die because the life biome needs to eat them and all, all sorts of things. Yep. Still don't know what the fuck that big <laughs> human skinned monstrosity is doing for the environment. He needed a horse. I mean, checkmate atheist is all we need to say, really. It's just, uh, you know, <laughs> how. <laughs> yeah, checkmate atheist. Intelligent design was, a, was wrong. It shouldn't have been done. <laughs> Uh, it's real and was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that Dan is engaging with uh, the ideas here. All right. Well, um, but yeah, I take it that the party's just spending uh, the night uh, helping Gladys get this all set up so that we can uh, uh, attack the problem on land with full gusto. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Throg will actually, and I'll mention, keep uh, a couple of these worms after they've ingested a few different paint colors. Because he has a suspicion that if each door is themed after the zone, we're going to need to make some form of a work of art. Ah, uh, sweet. <laughs> sweet. We have... <laughs> We have to, and we have two painters in this party. Yo, I got fucking artist tools. Or, or if I don't, I can make them. That's like a thing that I can do. I think we both have painter supplies. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, if I may suggest, I think the best result is a collaborative work. You two are making actual art, and Throg's doing a cave painting. <laughs> cave painting is a legitimate art form. Yeah, yeah. Don't 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 belittle your <laughs> Throg isn't trained in it though, so it's gonna look real weird. Th no, no, it's gonna look more authentic. Don't worry. Um, oh, it's, it's outsider art, the most <laughs> valuable form of art. Ah, uh, we're gonna Banksy this whole place up. Got it. Uh, anyways, God, I think um, yeah, like Gla Gladys makes this fucking baller ass eye. I guess. Like, I'm trying to think, can she just pop it in there? Or should that be like... A magical girl transformation where at the end she just kind of shoves it in? I just like to think, like, can I, can I put it in there? Do I have to make it dramatic? And like, uh, no, so it's like, I think you just pop it in. Unless you want to do something cooler, then just pop it in. I can't think of anything cooler, honestly, because like, it just, like, I, I like... I could paint a picture for you if you want. Put it on the edge of the pickaxe and swing it right back into place. <laughs> I, 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 well, the what I would propose is Gladys puts after like holding for a moment, not sure if it'll work. Puts it in the socket, you know, closes her eyes. And then, like, there's, you know, the void of nothingness. And then you start seeing the swirl of colors lingering inside of the vessel because somehow it interfaces directly with your mind and you're able to sense the lingering uh, reservoir of magic that's kind of in there. And when your eyes open, there's almost like a faint... Uh, rainbowish hue that lingers for a few moments until, well, your your brain adjusts to that information. That's sort of what I picture as when it happens. Just got just got to pop that eye right in there, and then the, the colors just kind of swirl in naturally. J just blink a few times and they're there. Uh, you can infuse more than one non-magical item at the end of a long rest. The maximum number of objects appears in the infused items column which I do not have in front of me. Did you want to make uh, better armor for Throg, as discussed previously, assuming we left that whole conversation in? Yeah, I, I was definitely thinking before we, like, headed off the next day to f follow Sprinkles into art world unknown, like, G Gladys would definitely offer, like the, ser the, like, like, the services of, like, improving Throg's armor. Just, like... It's kind of like as a gesture of like, like what happened was scary, and she she she's she can't guarantee she's not 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 gonna be a little jumpy for a little bit, but like she she knows that Throg wasn't in control of himself, and then this is like a like 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 a like a, like a I I don't hold it against you kind of gesture. 
uh, Throg will accept, but he is absolutely probably sleeping pretty far away from the rest of the party tonight. <laughs> I, I, I do think it's funny that I don't think any of the infusion things that Gladys can do can actually help Tran in any way, which is very funny. I love it. <laughs> So if you go with Sprinkles to try to find things for Throg's armor, uh, like I said, at the end of a long rest, you can just infuse. It's not a roll. But is there a roll you might want to use to uh, add flavor here as far as looking for art supplies or uh, materials? Yeah. If I'm doing something flavorful to, like, touch up Throg's armor to enhance it a little bit, uh, what kind of armor does he have again? I remember it's metal. (laughs) Uh, he just has a breastplate. He's got a breastplate because I was thinking if I can find like something like metallic gold paint, I could paint like a like like a fun symbol or, or something on like the front of uh, on the front of that uh, to, to to like kind of like symbolize the infusion like working its magic. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess I should say he he's wearing a breastplate uh, mechanically, but stylistically it's uh, decorated with. Um, I think I mentioned this before. He wears the uh, the uh, his previous Drake's uh, fangs around his wrist, and the rest of that Drake's bones adorn his uh, his armor. Ooh, mm. bones! Mm. Mm. Yeah, you mentioned that that was your spell casting focus, and we've discussed your look as being various animal hides and and furs and stuff. Right, right. So it's a relatively minimal metal addition, but also you're a skilled soldier and would probably employ some in there. Um, Why don't you actually give me, uh, because we've had survival in nature in the episode, an animal handling and see if the art worms can help you? Thirteen. Uh, So that's a success. Uh, So you can uh, gather some artworms for color, uh, and you can tell me how this looks and works. Uh, You basically have free reign flavor-wise. Mechanically, the infusion uh, does uh, prescribe the mechanical benefit, which I believe you said is your AC goes to 21. But otherwise, uh, you two tell me what Throg's uh, fit is looking like. How how fresh are we talking about a Throg here? Yeah, but... Like I like Gladys would want Throg's input because her instinct was to, like if you've got if if you've got like fangs and bones and stuff she would want to like paint little fi- filigree like colors across that you know make it look a little fancy. <laughs> um, I I think probably the the best and most fitting thing would be Th- Throg as he's mentioned is like a he he doesn't have a good actual history check but he knows a lot about like. Uh, dragon draconic myths and legends and I think the best way to depict uh, to to upgrade his armor if you're doing it with like art supplies is to essentially draw scenes from those legends across the armor oh yeah he can like be telling Gladys like a couple of these stories so that she knows what to paint onto this stuff Mm mm-hmm I mean, yeah, after, if we're done infusing, Throg would immediately just start setting out towards wherever Sprinkles told us to go, or pointed us in a direction of. Yes, she gestures in a direction with the with the cigar, and you all can start moving that way when you're fully healed. Uh, do you talk about anything on the way there, or do we want to do any checks? Uh, there's still some, you know, uh, art ecosystem to talk about. Wow, how how freeing that you figured this out in the first episode is introduced instead of what was the tunnel biome like six episodes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I'm trying to think. So I uh, hear some. I, I have some ideas, Austin. All right. Mm-hmm. So one of the features of this biome are trees, which have photosensitive leaves that, as the sun hits it, it actually creates a negative of whatever is projected on the other side of it. So you can basically use it as a basis for doing a f- basic photography work um, as one feature. Um, yeah, I'm completely blowing up the VFX budget for the HBO adaptation. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, it's, it's, speaking about that, uh, then there's also the... Um, then we got, of course, have the various... Uh, the various 3D media and stuff. And of course, we can't ignore the minimalist section of this biome, which is which they claim doesn't represent anything, but everyone just thinks that it looks like Mario anyways. Um, 
I, I would suggest that maybe um, instead of like your normal rock formations, a lot of the rocks here are just literal rectangles of solid uh, minerals or like granite, marble, etc. to for easier use in sculpting as mm, they come mm. pre pre cut. Oh no, they have, they, have, they have natural erosion patterns. They naturally erode into the s- statues. <laughs> Minecraft. For the rain. I, I was thinking about that, but I was also like, if it's a god of art, they want to encourage people to do art. I don't think it, they would want it pre-created. I think that's the difference between deciduous trees and evergreen trees, right? You get both right. kinds. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, so it, it makes uh, it makes what is it the the Venus de Milo, and then it it gives you the option to chop its arms off yourself. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and then it grows back into being a solid block of granite in the in the in the uh, in the growing season. Then in the dormant season, it erodes into the Venus de Milo. So it's only naturally the de Milo for a select period of the year, and that's peak uh, traveling season to witness the um the deciduous statues you know uh hummingbird or birds that eat the uh paint worms but if you catch them you can squeeze them like a spray paint can mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. i love spray the, cans. those the those are the artificers yeah that's what they're called you guys are ha- are having such cool ideas my brain goes in like a totally opposite direction of like instead instead of like paint materials like stuff to make art with the place just kind of looks like a, a painting or a drawing like when we when, when you were describing the beach where i was like oh it's like a pencil sketch drawing of a beach and that's why it looked weird so while we're traveling tran is going to then ask sprinkles uh so uh have you seen where the um uh, I guess what we're looking for is the the reliquary for this biome. Have you already seen it? Uh, so there's two actual questions there. When you say you were looking for the reliquary, Sprinkles shakes her head in a cloud of, of smoke. And then you say, have you seen it? And she then nods her head in the cloud of smoke. And I guess, I, I, I guess like, she, she'll ask, like, I, I know, I know time doesn't really work for you Abolith, the same way it does for us but I, I i am curious when did you make sprinkles did you up here old world shrug well how do you think i got here you know uh after they they found this place i, I had i had to get up here but it's a, it's a long walk and i got I just got tentacles and I'm, uh, I'm uh, slimy, and you know it's real cold. So I, I had to make a uh, someone to smuggle me in, you know, into the into the the, the bag, the big bag of holding. And just, she got she got to come up here and just to do a little sneak on you, and she got to bring me to the water because uh, everyone uh, like you they just they they see a big uh, abolith and they think uh, like I know more than that guy, uh, even though you don't. And they're always trying to attack me, and I, I haven't done it. I've I've just been here the whole time, you know. This is my house. I was here first and you all come here and you're just like oh it's our house now but it's not it's my house it, it, it as, as as soon as you say bag of holding she's she just like nods her head like oh yeah i guess that makes sense i i, I was about to ask how you would fit in in a bag but the the, the holding part is very important <laughs> Yeah, I I know the guy who invented that bag. You know, it was uh oh, it was like '96, and we were we were having uh, we were having milkshakes, and he says said you know you know I said Roxanne, you don't got to turn on your red light, and uh, you know they're too late, and since they were already and they just made a whole bag, and it's a big bag there, Jeff. What are you doing? And so that's the whole story. You know, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Uh, I think Throg would be thinking about it and probably would pause it. Uh, Beast, you want us to be effective minions for you, yes? Are you going to leave an a reliquary unattended with the useful t- uh, trinkets inside? You say you will free us. Frankly, I doubt it. We have no ability to refuse you. If you order us to go there we uh, to avoid the reliquary, then we have to. But... I would recommend the capture of these items. Well, if the reliquary isn't really where we're supposed to go, what even 
is it that you want us to do? I mean, you told me to, f- you told us to find your guy. I, th- I think we found him. So what do they need to find? Uh, so I'm, what I want you to find is a thing, right? And it's, it's a thing. It's called a form. All right. They're, uh, they're gods, right? Or there were, and now they're dead. And where they get their power from, man, they get them from the forms, right? And it's out there. And if someone gets it, they're going to take over this whole place. And it's not going to be good for dragons or, or for obliths. You know, the whole place is going to be bad. We can't let them, we can't let anybody have it. Is a form a place or an item? All right. Roll history. I am also going to roll history. I was just about to ask if I could roll history on that. I got a seven. Is he saying a form or a forum? Form. F-O-R-M. Okay, then then I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> I know what it is. because <laughs> yeah, <I'm... laughs> It's a previous Dice Funk thing. Okay. It's a Plato thing. He's a kind of an yes. old. Uh, he's an old guy from old times. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking, like, uh, isn't the Plato thing called the form? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know what I'm talking about. Look, it's been decades since I had Creek history. Yep, it's exactly that thing. We got an eleven and twelves so with above average. I'll say, Gladys, you're the one who knows the most. You've heard about this, uh, the basic idea of uh, the world of forms. Uh, I don't know if you want to uh, summarize your knowledge of this, Sarah, to seem uh, smart and cool in front of everyone. This is a great <laughs> opportunity, if you want to. Uh, yeah, the world of forms is like a, like a Plato uh, concept off the allegory of the cave, where every thing in the universe has like a platonic perfect version of itself and that's what the world of forms is it's every single like platonic perfect thing like form of chair form of apple form of gladys yes exactly uh and in our world uh plato just said that shit and it doesn't matter if he was right or wrong there is no effect on our universe but in the dice funk world uh it is true and this world of forms is where gods get their powers from uh and then clerics and paladins get their god get their powers from god so it's like a you know a chain of being essentially um but uh, the Aboleth is telling you that one of these forms is now in the physical world. And with a 12 on history, I think you have heard that this uh, has happened before, uh, Gladys. But it is a kind of like uh, poetic myth, like, you know, Excalibur or something. Like, you don't, I don't know if you actually believed that it was true necessarily. I think Gladys would be something like, you're, 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 you're looking for a, a form? I, I, I mean, I, I mean, I get, I mean... I guess, I guess if you remember they ex- they exist, I-, I guess they must. I know I've heard about them before, but I, I always assumed that was like an ex- exaggeration, like 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 oh, that must just be a very powerful object left behind by someone else. I did like, like you're you're saying that they're just like the thing, the the thing. That's what you. That's why you kept going. The thing. <laughs> Yeah, chief. I've been here since day day one or day zero, even you know, from the from the first day. And you know, they come one at a time. One form comes, and then it leaves, and another one comes, and it's just like it's always one, and it's always somewhere. And whoever finds it first, uh, they get the whole they get the whole package. You know, the whole enchilada, the whole uh, quesadilla, the whole tortilla. And uh, you know, it's we can't let anyone else have it. Uh, so actually, you know, I know what you're saying. You're thinking to yourself, this guy, he he exploded my eye, so he obviously wants it because he's a big evil guy. But that's not true, man. What I want, I want you to destroy it so no one can have it. You know, let everybody, you know, dragons. You can have your dragon world. I'll have the ocean. Uh, it's and it's it's good for everyone. So you know that this form thing is around and. M- where it roughly is but not what it is exactly i've been sending my little guys all over looking for it you know no one's found it in, in the old world uh but there's all this, this space up here and uh people have been looking for it and i got i got my people looking out for it and uh, little sprinkles uh says uh, you know she's found some clues there's been some, some explorers that came up and they, they found some clues and just i'm try- trying to follow the trail you know I'm, I'm like I'm I'm nodding I'm nodding I, I'm looking to Throg and Trayan like so, so so I know that I, I I've had the the idea of like of, of of like taking like these little like god these relics that the gods left behind and trying to figure out how those work like with the pickaxe and 
possibly with other things. I haven't really had a chance to to, to look at, at like the the shield that you got, Throg. But if this is something even more powerful and dangerous than the things we have been finding in in in, in the reliquaries, I think maybe I, I hate to say it, that does feel like a priority, even if we weren't this the the little guys using big air quotes <laughs> <laughs> i think given what we've been told and given our circumstance we might as well follow the leads that we have here's the deal you want you want to go to your their you want to go to your repository you want to do that first that's fine you want to you want to go do you want to find the, the form first that's fine doesn't matter to me, man. It's just you destroy the thing, and then you, can, then you can go and you can go to your little, uh, you can go to your dragon place and you do your dragon stuff with your dragon friends. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think Throg inherently doesn't trust this idea that oh yeah, I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do, especially because we know that Abolites inherently dislike gods because they're older than them, as in Abolites are older than gods. I think this is just a self-serving goal to remove a threat from the board, and he doesn't believe for a second that, for one thing, he doesn't believe that he's going to be freed. Uh, Throg would still suggest that we go to the um, the reliquary first, but if the team have votes on he's happy to do whatever the team says. There's a shrug from Tran, and he will basically have, he has no problem going to the reliquary um, himself first, now that we have a better idea of what our goals are, and what we can possibly leverage on the way there. So... Mm-hmm. I, I think if Throg and Tran are both on board for reliquary first, I think that Gladys will concede that, like, like the fo- the form sounds important, but she does want to know as much as she can about whatever we come across. And like, if we go to the reliquary, we'll learn we'll learn a little more about what's up with Art World. Yeah, it's funny because I didn't know you were going to suggest t- trying to democratize the god items. But if there is anything in the Dice Funk canon which could do that, it would be a form. And I feel like. If you're listening to the show, this might sound like a scripted plot point, but it is really just things bouncing off each other. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Throggle sort of ch- uh, nod his head and say, let let us get to the reliquary. We might have something of use. We don't know who, what we're going to find at this forum, but if it is powerful enough to make gods, it has probably got something that will be able to get rid of us quite easily, too. All right. Uh, so the party concludes their conversation with the Aboleth and follows Sprinkles uh, to the reliquary. She, she says, or, you know, she indicates uh, that she has seen it before, uh, but she doesn't actually speak out loud. Uh, she takes you uh, through a glen of these, uh, you know, beautiful uh, painted trees and all the little uh, hummingbird spray cans and the little uh, paint worms. Uh, and then you kind of reach a, a flat plain with uh some sketchy appearance to it like it seems like uh the ground has been you know scribbled with crayon or something it's a very strange uh thing to see in 3d in front of you Uh, but there's also unmistakably a large building uh which does not look uh like it's part of the the normal landscape uh what do you do Uh, i guess we're gonna approach the building why don't we get investigation rolls to approach the reliquary I got a 21. Uh, Tran rolls an 18, which is a natural 20. I got a 15. <laughs> so a 21, a 15, and a crit. All badass rolls here. Uh, so you all uh, walk up to the reliquary, uh, and you first. the first thing I want to give you is that you are not the first people by here. You see uh, scuffs and like smears in the landscape, which like the, the grass, which seems to be have been drawn with crayon in front of you, uh, has clearly been stepped on uh, in a way that <laughs> I was going to say, like, oh, you have no frame of reference. Uh, without a good roll, you wouldn't be able to tell what happened. Uh, but with this, the 21 and the crit, uh, these are giant footprints. Uh, in fact, with the crit, I'm going to tell you that you have seen a giant and they have, uh, you know, <laughs> up close, you have fought a giant. Uh, and it, it is not... The soles of his shoes say Rex on them. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be coy about it. Yeah, you think oh shit, Rex came this way, which also helps you place where you are geographically. Mm. Uh, I will put the map back in the roll twenty, but you know Rex went east from the mine, uh, and then you were in the ocean. You had a big fight. You got all turned around and washed up on a beach, and you don't know exactly where you are. But looking at this map now, you should be able to intuit where you are. I will put it here. Feel free to discuss. Okay, so that that's that yeah, so we're in the biome immediately to the east of the mines. Which is still south of the sea, so you see where you washed up. Right, okay. So we know that Rex has been here, probably and may have even gone further east from here. Um all right, fascinating. With a crit, I want to give you more. I will say you can look around and also find uh, tracks uh, that only a crit would tell you were from uh, a group of elves. Anything less, I would say they were like human size. But a crit, uh, there are uh, there are three sets of elf tracks. You can see the pointy tips of their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> they like curl up somehow. Yeah. I, like Trank crosses his arms and it's just like, so it looks like. Rex and Justine and the others have already gone through this area, but they didn't open up this reliquary. Yeah, you say that, and uh, with these, we're letting these investigation rolls ride. You walk up to the door. Uh, this building appears to be made out of uh, like a bunch of different materials. There's some parts of it that appear to be uh, like uh, marble, like we discussed before. Uh, there are parts of it that appear to be made out of like chalk or uh, you know that are like painted on somehow. Like there's just like the you know the god made it uh, as if it was drawn in chalk zone. That's how I was like, what is that? Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, what is uh, the th thing I'm oh, looking shit, for? We're gonna here. go inside and find a piece of chalk. Rudy's got the chalk. The chalk. The chalk. Chalk zone. Chalk zone. Who's got the chalk? Got chalk. <laughs> I'm so proud of all of you. Um, but then on the door, you see uh, it has a bunch of uh, pictograms. It has uh, gods of art throughout history, uh, Apollo, and so forth. Uh, and then there is a picture of, um, uh, you know, a blank canvas. And uh, the door is closed, locked. There is no obvious mechanism to open the door. Now, if I remember correctly, I kind of called shot in what was probably the way to open this was to make <laughs> some sort of piece of art, which is why I collected a bunch of worms. And I think we we, can't, we discussed, like, oh, what would we draw here? I more than anything want to Looney Tunes this and just have an open door painted on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, if you have uh, art proficiency, you can roll with your proficiency. Otherwise, uh, it's just a d20, I believe. Well, well, Gladys, are you going to do that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you I, have I, that I, ability? I, I've, Let's go. I, I've got um, proficiency with uh, uh, painter's supplies, so I, I, I could do that. You said that's... Perfect. All right. Um, Tran rolls a nine. Gladys rolls a 21. Holy shit. Uh, so 21 definitely is good enough. Uh, dude, paint me the picture. No, <laughs> no that was not intentional. <laughs> paint me the picture of what you do here. Yeah, I, th I think um, if Throg is the one who is gathering up the little wormies, then like I think Gladys would ask him for, for, the, for the little wormy guys and... and, and like we, we we would like discuss like you want you want to draw like a, like you, you you want me to like put like a like a like just pa paint the door being open that's your was was that what you meant well, that's what Dan wants to do out of character <laughs> in character Throck would have suggested like some sort of uh, I don't know like a landscape drawing or um uh something something of that nature he's not an artist he's at most putting a handprint on the walls and dipping his <laughs> dipping th uh, gort's feet in paint and putting those up there <laughs> i think i think gladys like like i was already coming to like the, the the idea separately of like okay she could like draw a picture of the building that we're in front of and, and like take some paint and like like do like a like a like a landscape like painting drawing in like her sketchbook on like a like a big page of that or, or wait are you suggesting like an mc escher effect where you draw a painting of a building on the front of which there's a painting of a building on the front of which there's a <laughs> painting of a building on which and then just infinitely uh no uh is there a part on the building to paint on 
I mean, yeah, I was saying that the the door had kind of a, a canvas on it, but oh, I see. But you don't have to. No, I I understand. I, I I think the I think the MC Escher thing has merit though, because that means we would have infinite reliquaries to take from inside by making an infinite <laughs> series of buildings. Amazing. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think with painting on the canvas provided to me, a uh, canvas, the uh, Gladys, not canvas. Her name's not. Her name's not Canvas. <laughs> this is my backup character, Canvas <laughs> Antimony. Her sister, her long lost sister. Her long lost sister, Canvas Parents Antimony. Meant to put down Candace. Unfortunately, there was a transcription error. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do like the idea of like painting the door being open. So, so I think. Like I don't know what's inside, but she's going to try to like mind, like just kind of like imagine what she maybe hopes to find inside, which is probably just based off of the previous, pl- like, like the mine. So, so, so it would probably be like like a drawing of the inside of like a cave, and like because she she doesn't know what's in there, but she's hoping like opening that leads to another door where the tomb is. All right, so you draw what you think is on the other side and then you step back and it's like an optical illusion uh, with like, you know, fake uh, depth to it, but then you walk up and it's just open. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen those uh, v- those viral videos of the people doing the the paintings in like a parking garage. Where it like those like. chalk drawings on the ground where it looks like you could fall in. And then I cut into uh, Gladys again with the pickaxe, and she's made a cake. <laughs> <laughs> Gladys cake, no. She was cake the whole time. So letting this crit continue to ride, you enter the art reliquary, and something you notice about this entryway is that the walls are like slashed up. Uh, you you see what is now clear to you to be like the aftermath of some kind of fight that happened here so like there were footprints outside of the elves and rex and you uh were like oh i guess they didn't go in here but now that you're inside you see they definitely came in and they fought um and so like there's uh, slashes on the walls from like uh what a hecatonkery is trying to swing a sword in an enclosed space Hmm. and i'm going to assume there's no item to retrieve from in here then um Continuing on, uh, because your rolls are so high, I'm, I'm not going to uh, ask for anything else. Uh, you continue down this uh, hallway uh, into the building, uh, and it has the appearance of uh, kind of a museum. I think, uh, Gladys, you said you were like picturing like a cave, like the mining uh, reliquary. But this is actually a much nicer building. It has like, uh, you know, pretty clean, uh, pristine walls, floors, ceiling. It almost looks like, you know, like there's a cleaning crew or something uh, marred only by the recent evidence of a fight. But as you walk down this hallway, there is like framed paintings on the wall. Uh, this is the reliquary of the god of art after all. Uh, and so it, ha- it has this almost like... Uh, you know. Oh, I, I think Throg's, Throg says, uh, this is quite a fine horde. Because <laughs> I think to dragons, there's probably no difference in Draconic between the word horde and museum. Ah, well, that's a great bit of wor- world building there. Uh, oh, I like that. Yeah, but it's 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 very classy. I, that's what the word I was looking for, is that uh, where the reliquary you've seen before was like really dingy and like dark because it was literally a mine. And I guess you also saw one made of flesh. Uh, like this is the first one you've seen where you're like, oh, just tasteful, nice. Um, mm, and mm, you, mm. you get the understanding there's actually a breadth of these kind of things. Um, and the, the, if it weren't for what appears to be like a burn mark where someone threw a fire spell, uh, you'd be like, this place rocks. I wonder how much it would cost to get a ticket in here. Uh, but you continue down to like the next wing of what would be, uh, you know, a museum, if that's what it wa- was. And here you see uh, there is a pedestal and then there is like a glass enclosure, the way that like a very valuable piece would have kind of a security system. Um, and on the pedestal, you see an item. I, I, I guess the, uh, the, I guess at least Gladys or, um, 
or Gladys and Tran or really just the trio just approach to get a better look at this item before we get blown up by some security system. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you walk into this uh, big room. Uh, once again, there's like art on the walls. There's probably some statues in here. Uh, there may be like some kind of diorama hanging down from the ceiling. But the centerpiece is clearly this uh, item under glass on this pedestal, which appears to be a, a metal uh, bracelet with a kind of uh, long piece of metal attached to it. Uh, the audience would recognize this as a hollow runner, although I don't know that you have any... Uh, understanding at all of what this is maybe arcana because it is a magic item yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna roll arcana gladys is like cautiously but like definitely like walking toward to get a better look at it gladys taking lead i'm gonna roll arcana kind of as a joke let's just see what we have here see. nice 25 Tran rolls a six he doesn't know what's going on here <laughs> <laughs> gord is sent marking the statues no. <laughs> He's All right, disrespecting 20, the art. 25 is incredible. Uh, Gladys, you actually immediately recognize it. I was going to say none of you have any technological context, but you must be a very specific kind of nerd uh, because this uh, device is actually a, a playing piece for a, a, an ancient pre-apocalyptic card game. Uh, it is basically the the board upon which hollow deck cards are played to summon monsters in the style of Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic the Gathering, but specifically the dual discs from Yu-Gi-Oh! is the inspiration for this device. Uh, and it is undisturbed. When I said that it appeared Rex and the elves had fought here, I think, you know, Skitch said, oh, I guess there's no item. Uh, but what you uh, get from this whole context situation, you know, critting on your investigation, I will say is it appears Rex won, the elves fled, and then Rex saw that the item was made to go on the wrist of a humanoid. Uh, and he is a, you know, 25 foot tall giant and was like, oh, <laughs> bollocks. That's nothing to me. And uh, left. If he was smarter, just saying. It's a perfectly got fine cock ring right there. <laughs> oh my god, you're a monster. <laughs> Look, uh, all of these games are is just a series of lateral thinking puzzles, and he <laughs> failed the puzzle. Yep. Um, but there is a door behind this room, uh, so the, the reliquary continues deeper. Mm, yeah. I. So, so for Holodeck, is it would you could would you say would you describe it like in the current setting as being like like a game from like the old times or do people like still play it? It is definitely pre-apocalyptic uh, in technological form, which is to say the way it was played in uh, in the sci-fi seasons of this show was that you had this hollow deck, it's a piece of, you know, metal that goes on your wrist, and then you put the special cards on it and the, the holographic monsters would be summoned into reality and could like fight in front of you. Uh so that is like hard light technology beyond what we have even here in, you know, 2022 as of recording. Uh, but in in the future where you are, like, you could probably make paper trading cards and play the game. You just wouldn't have the technological aspect of, like, bringing the monsters to life. Mm. So, I, I mean, Gladys, with a 25, you can be like, I've played a version of Hollow Deck without the tech, but, like, I know there is tech from the old times. Yeah, she, she, she I think considering how well I rolled, I think she would be at least a little bit geeking out. Like, oh my God, like, look, look, this, 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 this thing, this is how you used to play, like, like the card game where you, you put it on your wrist and then you, you make like a little, like gl glowing, like version, like a little monster pop out of your wrist and you could play the game that way. And with the 25, I'll also say that, you know, like all the best artists in the world were like commissioned to do art on the cards. Like it's, uh, you know, gallery quality art, like a piece from a, an original piece from a hollow deck card would go for like the equivalent of like $50,000 or something. I, I, I definitely think Gladys is the type who, who's like, like excitedly explaining this to Throg and Trey and who I, I don't know how they feel about it. And it's like, this is, I, I love I, like, like the, the, the pieces of art that you're able to, that, that, that one can be able to find in like old books and stuff. They're really good. I, 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 I uh, like, I, I admit I'm not very good at the game, but I do really like the art. <laughs> I, I'd say Throg 
you know, I'm going to say Thog is passingly familiar with this concept, specifically because one of his kids probably considered the cards as part of his first horde, and Throg didn't fucking understand it at all. <laughs> and he's going to go, yes, this is the uh, the p- Porky Mans, I think. <laughs> that, that is what this is, yes? Yeah. That's great. Yeah, Tran just sort of blinks a few times and then says... Well, um, maybe if you know what that thing is, maybe you could make good use of it. Just uh, Trayan says that, and then Gladys, though she's still excited, is like, "I, I, 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 it would be nice to get it. it, it uh, I, I wonder if can, can I just is, is there a secure is there some is something going to try to kill me if I lift this glass up, or can I just?" Is there any? Is there any? What would I have to do to try to see if there's a security system here? The only thought I could have is like if we could exit the building quickly, grab a bunch of chalk from or pigments or what have you, and throw it to see if there's like a fucking laser grid or something like that. Would, I I like that idea. I have also been thinking laser system because of how heists and museums usually work. I don't know if any of us would know what a laser system is or how it works. Uh, what what is the display made of? Like the glass, like the the item itself is in a display case, and Probably on the, top of yeah, the yeah. item it's is like resting on the something, pedestal, right? yeah, yeah, the that. pedestal that it's on, yeah, some kind of stone pedestal, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna take my magical pickaxe and I'm going to use its <laughs> once a day ability to try to reshape the stone to just have a hole I can shove my arm through and grab it. Oh, okay, so yeah. Okay, interesting. Uh, I was not expecting that. You can uh, use your pickaxe to tunnel under the display through the stone pedestal, grab the hollow runner, pull it out, uh, and now you have it. I guess you have not activated the security system. <laughs> See, now if Rex did that, he'd have a perfectly good cock ring by now. Uh, and yeah, Thorgal hand it over to Gladys. Oh, she, 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 she will, like, h- hold it, like... Like, she's worried she's going to break it by breathing on it. <laughs> no, you need you need the cards or something, yes? So this is a bit of uh, irony for the audience who knows that in the future, Sprinkles has the Hollow Runner and a deck of cards. So it, a lot of intrigue here uh, that I admit I don't even know how it's going to shake <laughs> out. <laughs> um... So Throg not really knowing much about um the like how any of this game works other than there are cards which depict things. Uh do these paintings look like they might be cards or have anything that would remind him of the game his kid played like 30 years ago? I think if you take a hard look at the art, Throg, uh, you will notice that some of it appears to be uh, card-sized. Uh, there's like, you know, little uh, paintings, big paintings. There's a, a wide variety. I think people always say like the Mona Lisa is much smaller than you think it is. I think there's, uh, you know, a wing of this reliquary museum, which appears to have art from the game pieces. Uh, yeah, Throg will go up and look at the... Uh... Uh, I don't know the the green eyed bugbear dragon or whatever. Uh, <laughs> and go, the green eyed bugbear dragon, the canonical hollow deck card. Yeah, mm-hmm. and be like, uh, isn't isn't this the the cards or whatever the fuck? <laughs> but that is will like follow shortly behind him and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that is. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I want to say you find the green eyed bugbear dragon card, but it is in a frame. Just, just throw some tomato soup on it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, oh, this will be an old ass reference by the time the audience hears. <laughs> um, um, oh. let's see. Have you have you stone shape already? Can't do that no more. Will each and every card be booby trapped? Is the question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to check for booby traps, a sleight of hand is what I would like from you. Is anyone here good at that? If not, I guess I'll do it. Trayan has plus five on it. All so. right, I've only got a plus three, so good luck. Right. Trayan seems like the best. So Trayan Tra- gets pushed two. forward. And just like, oh, 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 um, all right, uh, let's see here. Uh, that's an eight. Kill me now, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, all right, so Tran, you uh, try to remove the card from the frame, uh, and as you do so, you like you know take it apart piece by piece, uh, and uh, as you go to pull the whole assembly apart, there's a click noise. Uh, and the uh, card suddenly lights up. It f- like flares up to life in a blinding light. And you all are like, you know, whoa, you step back, you cover your eyes. Uh, the card slips out of uh, its enclosure and like floats to the ground. And then in the light, uh, you see it uh, take a shape and a green-eyed bugbear dragon steps out. You have chosen the form of your destructor. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh shit.